All right. We are out here again at the cul-de-sac for some more testing with a mosquito. Um, let's see. So I've done a few more hover tests. I got it moving pretty quick one time. Let's get this back on.
Dude, that is stressful AF. Not gonna lie. That is pretty stressful. Whew. You have to be on your game as far as power management goes. Because there's no extra power with this thing. Yeah, so I re-greased the head and I can see that it's slinging out everywhere. Which is fine. I kind of just want to look over everything. Shut the engine off with the rotor still up to feel for tail rotor vibrations and it feels good. No complaints there. Uh, I did a little mini auto, so I kind of put, I put the collective full down and the rotor stayed in the green. So that's that's a huge plus right there. Um, I was looking for that. I want the rotor, the pitch link set right because if you see these pitch links right here, you can have them, this is to adjust like the track and balance, right? And um, you can have them both good tracked and balanced, except these are both too short, which would make the blades um, have too much pitch in them. So if your engine fails and you put the collective all the way down, there's not enough negative pitch to allow the blade to continue to auto rotate. And that's one thing I was checking for. So I just um, did that. I put the collective full down kind of rolled the engine off a little and the rotor stayed in the green so that's a good plus lets me know the engine quits I can successfully auto rotate check how this looks looks good the track feels good man it feels uh, smoother the way I adjusted that so shroud plugs Shrouds look good. Temperatures stay within range the entire time, which is good. Belt engine's still good. Everything's good. I've got no reason to not fly this thing. I'm gonna switch my camera around. This thing is not easy to fly, man. Uh, especially on approach when uh, you don't need much power. You only need a little bit. And then the uh, the engine. So, you know, the rotor like just needs a little bit of help. But the because it's a two-stroke, it, it wants to go. It wants to freaking rev up. And so it's like the throttle is so sensitive. It's just like on and off. And that's why you get these yaw moments. Uh, because the clutch is engaging. And it's swinging the helicopter. It's pretty hard to maintain rotor RPM in the green. Um, you just, you constantly have to tweak throttle, which, you know, uh, advanced helicopters, pretty much anything in the civilian sector or military sector, you don't have to control the throttle. Everything is done for you. You just put the rotor to 101 or 100% and then you fly it and then the engine maintains 100 for you. On this one, you have to adjust this throttle right here here, I'll show you. So on this one, you have to adjust the throttle right here to maintain while you're flying. And if you if you pull the collective up, you also have to add throttle. If you put the collective down, you have to reduce throttle to keep it at 101. But um, if you're hovering, you need more throttle. And then you when you fly forward, you have to reduce some of that throttle because it, it takes less power to fly forward than it does for you to hover a helicopter. Um, so that's different. That's something new that I'm having to learn on this helicopter because other helicopters I've flown, I don't have to do that. It just, the, the computer does it for me. But on this one, I'm constantly having to tweak the throttle in flight to, uh, to maintain that 100% rotor RPM. Um, the cyclic on this helicopter compared to others I've flown is, um, a, it, it's less sensitive. So other helicopters, I can hover with just this much cyclic input. Yeah, I can say here, this one, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing this to, to hover this helicopter and other helicopters, it's about half. So 
and and I can also feel that in forward flight. It takes, you know, when I, when I'm going to take off and fly, like I'm pushing this, I'm hovering here. And then when I'm flying forward, the stick is up here to maintain, you know, I don't know, 40, 30 miles an hour, something like that. Uh, that's different than other helicopters too. So it's just your uh, cyclic range on this helicopter is less. You have a little bit less um, control. That said, it, it's easier to be precise because it's so small and so lightweight. And I can see the ground. I'm like pretty much sitting right above the ground. So it's easy for me to um, kind of hold a, a certain position. It just takes more input in the control. So it's easier to be precise However, you have less um, authority, so you have to use more input to get the same effect as a large helicopter. Uh, what else? The tail, I was surprised. It has quite a bit of tail rotor authority. I never, I've never been full left pedal yet um, in the air. I, I, I don't run out of uh, tail rotor authority with this helicopter, and that's good. Um, there's full-size helicopters that have too little tail rotor authority and it's probably because uh, this engine isn't very powerful so it, it can't produce a ton of torque and therefore you don't have to counteract that much torque with the tail rotor so um, plenty of tail rotor authority for the engine that's on this helicopter right now it just it doesn't have that much torque to really produce that much it's cool it's, it's such a neat experience to fly this thing it's very very, very cool. I don't know if I want to keep it or not, though. <laughs> Partially because I'm moving soon. I'm moving to a, another country, and I can't take this with me. Um, so I'm going to have to put it in storage. That's a bummer. Uh, it's okay. It's not going to, like, go bad or anything, but it's going to sit in storage for a while unless I sell it. And I'm not opposed to selling it. So if someone watching this channel has an interest in, in buying this helicopter, uh, it's for sale. You know, it's just got to be for the right price. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and throw this out there right now. I'll sell this today for $30,000. Um, the kits, they don't sell this one anymore. This is um, a Part 103 helicopter. You don't need a license to fly it. The only one they sell now that is Part 103 is the XEL, and you have to put floats on it. To meet the requirements because if you have floats on an aircraft the weight requirement goes up to be considered an ultralight um, but a lot of people don't want to put floats and fly like that because it to be honest it looks kind of dorky unless you're on the water but i've never actually seen anyone land it on the water either so <clears throat> this one is for sale 30 grand um test flight complete everything is tuned tracked and balanced uh it's good to go you could load it on a trailer drive it home, put it in your garage, and take it out and fly a helicopter for 30 grand. That's, in my opinion, a pretty good deal. Um, these kits sold for about 30 grand new. This one's very, very, very low hours. I think it only, it has less than 40 hours on it total, and that's including the hours that I've put on it, because I bought it with 30-something hours. Um, yeah, 30 grand, that's how much they cost new. However, you have to build it yourself, and it takes three to 400 hours. If you can put an hour a day in, which most people can't because life gets in the way, it would still take you a year to, to build this helicopter. Um, so, yeah, that's my asking price right now. If you want to buy this, 30 grand, you don't have to build it. Everything is built for you. Everything is complete. Everything is running. You can just go out and fly a helicopter for $30,000. Um, if you have questions, if you're a serious buyer, um, you can either comment below and uh, we can exchange emails or... We can uh, find me on Facebook, send me a message there, and I'll send you all the details. Hope you guys enjoy. Maybe I'll take it for another quick rip. And uh, thanks for watching. Peace. If you got questions about helicopters in general, let me know. Thanks for watching. Peace.
a big fan of left pedal turns. I prefer always turn left turn if, if I can, even if I have to do a 270 degree turn. It's, it's fun, um, but uh, it uses more power to do left pedal turns than it does right pedal turns until you need to stop the turn, uh, and then it's the opposite. But um, I like to do those left pedal turns. It's easier to uh, maintain the rotor RPM and control the helicopter with left pedal than it is right pedal. Because right pedal, if you build that yaw rate up, um, it just wants to continue to accelerate and then you try to stop it with a bunch of left pedal and then your rotor droops and then you're trying to add throttle and stop the turn and it, I prefer left pedal turns for that reason and uh, this helicopter doing it with this helicopter just um, justifies my my thought process on that let's keep going Here's the thing about this Mosquito Air. I love the collective feel, like it's just the right amount of friction, in my opinion, on, on how much force it should take to pull the collective. Some helicopters are super light. It's like you barely touch it and then like the helicopter's in the air. This one's perfect, like just enough friction um, to lift it off the ground. Uh, what else? Yeah, to me that's, that's ideal. Um, the cyclic feel, like I said, it's just a little numb. It's just like a little bit of uh, not enough authority in the cyclic axis. But, I mean, I get that. If, if they made it uh, more sensitive, then it would take more force to push it around, too. So, I mean, everything's a trade-off. Uh, pedals feel great on this helicopter, too. Very little force required to push them. And uh, they have that, a good amount of authority to them. Uh, collective pop too, like boop. it's got the rotor's got inertia, man. It's it's got a good amount of inertia, and I love it. That's how you fly a helicopter in the desert. Never come to a hover over the sand. Woo! She's a bad man pajama. Well, I don't know how much fuel I have left. I'm gonna uh, get her on home. Maybe uh, take a quick paramotor rip. 
weather turned out being to, to be beautiful today. Let's get out of the rotor. Oof, she's a beaut. Good, man. She feels good. I'm digging this thing. I'm really digging it and I'm gaining trust in it. And I like it. Don't worry about my uh, center of gravity fix. So yeah, let me show you guys this. I filled the uh, cup there. So I filled this cup here with uh, BBs. And um, to fill the weight and it still wasn't enough. With this uh, eight pound weight on there, now uh, at a hover, with that eight pound weight on there, now when I'm at a hover, uh, my cyclic is pretty much centered. So now my center of gravity is good. Ooh, I gotta clean all this grease off. <laughs> Splooged everywhere. Hey, if it's not leaking grease, it means there's none in it, okay? So you gotta keep grease in it. Um, yeah, so center of gravity is now good on it. It hovers the way that it should. Uh, and I like it. it. It's a little bit of extra weight, but as you saw, you know, it still has enough power to, to play around with. And then, you know, uh, I don't mind it. Dude, I'm so stoked with this helicopter. I cannot believe it. It's good, man. The whole thing is good to go. All there is to do is fly it now, I guess. All there is to do is fly it. So this tow order, this is called a Delta Hinge. Uh, what it means is the axis that this tilts at changes the pitch of the blades when the, when the blades tilt. Uh, because this pitch link is offset from here. If this pitch link is 90 degrees to this uh, head, like the main rotor is, then when the blades flap, it doesn't change the pitch in the blades. But because these are offset, when this blade flaps up, it pulls this pitch link in and it adds pitch to this blade, which then brings it back in line. It's pretty neat, it's called a delta hinge. Um, almost every helicopter with a two-bladed rotor system like this utilizes a delta hinge. It's very good. Shut the fuel off. Good to go. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy my mosquito air as much as I do. I'm so stoked to have this thing. If you got questions, comments, hit me up. Peace.